What's up everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here. Moving on to the next concept. This is going to be a new one in advanced functions. We're going to be dealing with piecewise functions in this section. And so there's going to be a bunch of examples. Uh, we're going to look at abstract piecewise functions. So just pure mathematically how they work. And then there's also going to be word problems. So a bunch of different problems that you could run into. You're definitely going to be tested on these on your unit test. So make sure you go through all of the examples and uh, I'll also have more examples on the tests on the website that you could find at the end of the unit. So to explain piecewise functions in this first video, I wanted to jump into an example right away because I feel like that's the best way to explain it. Basically, just like the name sounds, you're uh, it's basically going to be a function with different pieces, right? So we're combining multiple functions into one. That's basically what piecewise functions are going to be. And you're going to see they're going to take this kind of format here. And so you're going to see an expression right here. And then you're going to see for the domain on which that expression holds or on which the y values are defined with that expression, right? So this here right? This part here represents the domain of the piecewise function. And then this here, these expressions here are going to represent basically what the y values are defined by. Okay. And you read them in rows. So like this row over here, another way to think about is put in a different color. Basically what it's saying here is when the x values are greater than or equal to zero, the y values are defined by the function x squared, like that. And this row here, basically when the x values are less than zero, the y values are defined by negative x plus two, right? So that's basically what's going on here. That's how you read these functions, right? You read them with rows. So this part here, what the y values are defined, and this part here is the domain for those specific uh, functions. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to take this piecewise function and I'm going to graph it. I'm going to show you the process that I go through personally with graphing it. Now, first thing I like to look at is the domains and notice that where these two pieces are connecting, where are they meeting? At what x value are they connecting? They're basically connecting at an x value of zero. All right. So I like to call that like the meeting point. Okay, they are meeting at an x value of zero. So to the left of zero and to the right of zero, it's going to be different functions. And then you'll see in future videos, you could have multiple meeting points as well. It doesn't just have to be one in this particular example, just because we're starting out, there's only one meeting point, x equals zero, right? So to the left of zero, it's this function. To the right of zero, it's this function. So then what I like to do is I like to make a table of values for both of these with their respective domains. So um, let's go from left to right. So the x value is less than zero. We'll make a table here for this negative x plus two. And then over here, we'll make a table for the x values to the right, which is defined by x squared like this. Now, Here's what's important. In the table, for both of them, you always want to put the meeting point for both of them. However, if you look clearly, zero is defined for this domain, right? Because it says x is less or uh, greater than or equal to zero versus here, it is not defined, right? It just says when x is less than zero. Okay, but you still want to put, even though um, the x value of zero is not defined here on this domain for this um, piece, for this negative x plus two, it is going to be defined all the way up until that point. I'm going to show you graphically in a sec how it looks like. Let's fill in these tables first. So let's just start with the x value of zero. If I plug in zero for this y equals negative x plus two, negative zero plus two gives me two. Okay, if I plug in zero here, y is equal to zero squared, which would give me zero. Now, 
without even graphing it, because these y values are different at that meeting point of x is equal to zero, then right away I know this function is going to be discontinuous, right? There's going to be a jump from one y value to the other at that meeting point, right? If these were the same, then the function would be continuous throughout, okay? And we'll, as the section goes on, we're going to do a lot more examples dealing with continuity, but just wanted to mention that first, that if at that meeting point, which in this case is zero, the y values of the pieces are different at which they're meeting, then we know that the function is going to be discontinuous, but you will see that graphically. So that's the first thing I want to mention. Second thing, here, the x value is defined like I mentioned, right? It says x is greater than or equal to zero. So at an x value of zero, the y value is gonna be defined by this function x squared, which is just zero. So that means that this coordinate here is going to be a solid dot on the graph. And this coordinate here, zero and two, because this function, negative x plus two, is not including the zero, it just says x is less than zero, that means this coordinate here on the graph is going to be a whole. Okay, so that's the first thing I like to do before even filling out the table. When I put that initial meeting point for both, the coordinate, I like to label which one's gonna be a whole, which one's gonna be a solid. It's impossible for there to be two solids because that would fail the vertical line test, right? Then you would have two y values defined for a single x value. It would no longer be a function then. You can have two holes. Sometimes you may run into ones like that, but you can't have two solids, right? So only one of them can be solid. And in this case, it's this one because the x value was defined there. Now, if instead this said x is greater than zero and this one said x is less than or equal to zero, then this, would be the solid dot because that's where the y value would be defined and this one would be a whole if it was like that okay but it's not like that right so basically let's go back this is the whole on this function this is going to be the solid right so before filling out your table that's the first thing you always want to label and then from here uh, for this table, because it's x values less than zero, you just want to pick x values less than zero to plug in. So less than zero, negative one, negative two, negative three, let's say. So if I plug in negative one here, negative negative one is positive one, plus two is three, negative negative two, two, four, negative negative three, three plus two is five, like that. All right, this is just going to be a line right here, and these are going to be the coordinates. And then over here, this function x squared is defined for x values greater than or equal to zero, so you wanna use x values greater than zero, so like one, two, three, let's say. One squared is one, two squared is four, three squared is nine, right? This is basically gonna be a quadratic. And so once you have your tables filled out to the left and to the right of the meeting point, and then you have the whole and the solids properly labeled, then you could go into graphing this. And when I'm gonna graph these uh, pieces, let's do it in separate colors so you could uh, distinctly see them. So this one, let's start with this uh, table of values here for this negative x plus two, I'm gonna do it in green. So zero and two, that's gonna be here. Now that's gonna be a hole like that, right? As we labeled on the table. And then uh, negative one and three, by the way, these scales, they're going up by ones on the x-axis and the y-axis as well. So we have negative one and three, that's gonna be here. And then we have negative two and four, and then negative three and five, right? So just a uh, slope of negative one, and it's just gonna be a straight line that looks like that and that's going to keep going on forever right because it's all the x values less than zero so all the way to negative infinity right so i could just keep extending this negative four negative five all the way to negative infinity it's just basically going to be a line like that 
Okay, now what about this other piece? So this x squared right here. Well, this one, uh, the meeting point is the x value is zero, but at zero and zero at the origin, it's gonna be a solid dot like that, right? Because it's defined again at that x value is zero. Then plotting the other points is gonna be a quadratic. So we got one and one, we got two and four, and we got three and nine. I'm just gonna be like that, right? So it's just the half, the right half of the um, quadratic. Maybe make it look a little nicer. Anyway, you know how this is supposed to look, right? It's just x squared, the other half of x squared. And so that's how this um, graph would uh, look like, right? So we have this piece, the negative x plus two, and then we have this quadratic here on the right side, solid dot right there at the origin. And then there's a hole right here, okay? And then a lot of times these questions will ask you to comment, is this function continuous or not? Well, this function is discontinuous. This piecewise function is discontinuous at an x value of zero. And we didn't even have to graph it. Again, you could just look at compare the y values at that meeting point of x is equal to zero. And if they're different, then you know it's gonna be discontinuous error. If they're gonna be the same, then it would have continued and looked like that, right? And there wouldn't be any break in, uh, in the graph. But there was this break here because the y values at the meeting point were different. All right, so that's basically in a simple way how piecewise functions work, how you read them. And in the next few videos, we're gonna go through a bunch of other examples. And that's a wrap for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you wanna see more videos like this, please go to my website, allthingsmathematics.com. Over there, all of the videos are organized by chapter, by section. If you feel like you need tutoring at any point, you could also hit me up. My contact details are on the website. Enjoy your day and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.